Hello students, in this video we'll discuss continuously payable annuities. Let's suppose we have an effective annual interest I and we'll let new is 1 over 1 plus I is the present value factor. And so here's the setup we're going to do for a continuously payable annuity. Let's do this over one year for simplicity, and then we'll generalize it. So here's our timeline. Here's time zero. Here's time one year. If I want to pay in $1 over this year continuously, our goal is to pay $1 over the year continuously. And so what I'm going to do is the following. I'm going to actually partition this interval 0 to 1 into n pieces. So here's time 1 over n, 2 over n, 3 over n, all the way down to n over n. And then I'm going to give 1 over n dollars at each of these locations. 1 over n, 1 over n, and this is going to relate to a, it's a very similar notion to the idea of a annuity that's paid either, paid nth with a nominal rate of interest. But we want to at least get some uh, a sense of why the formula we get involves the force of interest. Okay, great. And so now, what's the, uh, and so I'm going to pay it 1 over n at time 1 over n, 1 over n at time 2 over n, 1 over n at time 3 over n, 1 over n at time n minus 1 over n, and 1 over n at time 1. So what's the present value of this stream? The present value of this stream is going to be 1 over n new to the 1 over n plus 1 over n new to the 2 over n plus 1 over n new to the 3 over n all the way down to 1 over n new to the n over n, okay? Now, notice that they each have a factor of 1 over n. So I'm going to write this in a, in a sigma notation. This is the sum, j goes from 1 to n, of new to the j over n times 1 over n. So that's exactly the expression we have over here. And I'd like to figure out what happens as n goes to infinity. That means the payments are going to be compressed down to an instant, right? So our question, question, what happens as n goes to infinity? Okay. Well, let me remind you. So recall the integral from 0 to 1 of f of x dx, if I use Raymond sums, is the limit as n goes to infinity. j goes from 1 to n. Those are the right Raymond sums. f of j over n times 1 over n. So now what we can do is we can identify what function we have here. We have new to the j over n, so our function is just new to the power new to the power x or new to the power t. Okay? So I'm using this as this is of course as a Raymond sum. This is our Raymond sum definition of the integral. So if we apply this Raymond sum from calculus, this definition of the integral via Raymond sums, as n goes to infinity, the present value, the limit as n goes to infinity of the present value of this stream is the limit as n goes to infinity, the sum j goes from 1 to n of nu to the j over n times 1 over n. That's going to be the integral from 0 to 1 of nu to the x dx. And so now I can use some calculus. An antiderivative of nu to the x is going to be nu to the x over the natural log of nu, the natural log of um, nu. Excellent. And so now I evaluate this from what to what? I evaluate this from 0 up to 1. So when nu is equal to 1, we're going to get what? We're going to need to get a nu. When nu is equal to 0, we're going to get a minus 1. And we're going to have a log of nu. Now, the log of nu is the same as negative the log of 1 plus 1. So I'm going to write this as nu minus 1 over negative the natural log of 1 plus i. Because here I'm using what fact? I'm using the fact that nu, so I know that nu is 1 over 1 plus i. And so the log of nu is the log of 1 plus i to the negative 1. And with logs, I can bring out powers. So this is the same as negative log of 1 plus i. So I'm using that property of logarithms. So now I'm going to simplify this as just 1 minus nu over the natural log of 1 plus i. And that's the present value of this annuity stream. And so oftentimes, you write this as delta. So this is going to be 1 minus nu 
over delta, where that's the force of interest over here. So now, how does this generalize that it wasn't a period of one? Well, the same argumentation, this more complicated form of Riemann sum, this is actually a really nice reversion of Riemann sum. If we want to do the present value, if I said a n i bar for a continuous annuity, what it will be is instead of a period of one, where the exponent over here is a one, it'll be one minus nu to the n over delta. The same formula works if my time step is not over a zero to one, but rather is over zero to n. Again, the Riemann sum just looks a little bit messier. There's two parameters instead of, there's three parameters instead of two. So we're going to do, we'll use this simple example as a motivation for how it works in general. And I encourage you all to see if you can extend this argument to the case from zero to n. The exact same argument works with the Riemann sums. And it's a good way of understanding how continuous annuities are built from nominal annuities. Thank you very much.